you need to go over local anesthetic dosing as well. Um, if you know this math cold, you can skip this and um, just pick up in a minute or so once we've done this. What does it mean when you say you have a X percentage of local anesthetic? In essence, just times that by 10 and then you'll end up with milligrams per mil of local anesthetic. How you get there is what the percentage means is uh, percent by weight. So your lidocaine or your local anesthetic for your solvent. We know that a mil of water or solvent in this case is one gram. So they're saying we have 2%. So we have two grams of local anesthetic for 100 grams of water or two grams per 100 mils of water or solvent or 0.02 grams per mil or 20 milligrams per milliliter. So 2% Lido is 20 milligrams per mil. Lots of local anesthetics for infiltration will also have some epi in them. So they'll have something like one in 200,000 epi and you should be able to calculate how much epinephrine you're giving somebody. So again, that's just a ratio for weight. So it's epi weight to the weight of the solvent. So they're saying for every one gram of epinephrine, you have 200,000 grams of water or just 200,000 mils, which works out to 0 0.005 milligrams per mil or five mics per mil. And mics per mil is my preferred units for epi. Just compare that for fun with the dose of epinephrine that you're giving for an EpiPen, which is 300 mics. So if you're giving 20 mils of a local anesthetic that has five mics per mil in it, you're giving a hundred mics of Epi or a third of an EpiPen dose. So that can be not insignificant. The best quick math I can think of for this is uh, a million divided by X gives you mics per mil of epi. So a million divided by 200,000 will give you five mics per mil. Or if this is one to 1,000 epi, then you would have 1,000 mics per mil. I think the max dose of uh, common local anesthetics is something you should commit to memory. So for lidocaine, it's 4.5 or some people will say five milligrams per kilogram. And then with epi, so if you add epi to that, it will cause some vasoconstriction and slower uptake into the bloodstream. So you can get away with a slightly higher dose. So you can go up to seven milligrams per kilogram. For bupivacaine, your max is 2.5. And if you use with epi, you can stretch that to three milligrams per kilogram. And for ropivacaine, your max is uh, basically three milligrams per kilogram. Bupivacaine being a highly lipophilic local anesthetic has the longest duration. So four hours, and then you can stretch that up to eight hours with epi. Lidocaine, not as lipophilic. So as a shorter duration, two hours, maybe four hours with epi. The terminal elimination half time, you probably don't have to know, but it's interesting at least that it mirrors your duration. So as your local anesthetic is reabsorbed into your system and then metabolized, it will stop working. So 1.6 hours, 3.5 hours, and 1.9 hours. Something you should keep in the back of your mind is that since the max dose of bupivacaine is 2.5 milligrams per kilogram, and one of the most common concentrations used for skin infiltration post-surgery is 0.25%. You can safely or just safely give the patient's weight in kilograms as milliliters of bupivacaine or the max volume 
in mils that you can give of 0.25% bupivacaine is the patient's weight. So if they weigh 80 kilograms, in theory, you could give that patient 80 mils of bupivacaine, although you often would not need that much. This is perhaps more relevant in pediatrics where um, you have to be very careful about not giving a 20 kilogram uh, child more than 20 mils of 0.25% bupivacaine. Also, generally, local anesthetics have added toxicity. So you cannot give 4.5 milligrams per kilogram of lidocaine and 2.5 milligrams per kilogram of bupivacaine. Uh, that would almost certainly result in some amount of systemic toxicity.